Hi people of the Philippines and people of the world, hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking. Kaibigan, tuloy ang usap. Ay, tampo ka, kitito ay siya mo. Ngayon po, opo. Explain that. Ipaliwanag mo sa akin. Because, natapos naman po yung kontrata namin ng tama, ng maayos, ng hindi po kami magkaaway, super nagkakaintindihan po kami. Ang pagkakaintindi ko po, supportado siya sa lahat ng gusto ko. Ako din naman po, ganun towards him. Nag-usap kayo ng maayos. Nagpaliwanan po ako ng maayos. Five months before my contract ended with him. Dahil nababring up na po niya like in passing na kung magre-renew ka na sa akin ganto na lang yung commission na kukunin ko sa'yo. I felt out of respect that I needed to let him know what my plans were. And I told him, Nang maayos, nilinaw ko sa kanya, Tito Oji, I'm grateful for you. I'm so thankful for everything that I've achieved and experienced because of you and your guidance. And I will forever hold in my heart the lessons that you have taught me. It will forever be a part of me. Sinabi ko yun sa text ko sa kanya. Five months before your contract ended? Yes. And then? And sinabi ko sa kanya, but by the time that our contract ends, hindi na po ako mag-renew. And in-explain ko po kung bakit. Sinabi ko, um, we've been working together for 11 years now. I was signed to a 10-year contract with him. Um, and not for anything. I, it's not because I didn't like yung pinagsamahan namin. Hindi po ako naging masaya sa career ko. It's because I want growth. And I believe that I can find that by working with other people by learning things from other people as well, by taking on new experiences. And super, like, nung una natakot po ako sabihin sa kanya yun kasi I didn't know kung paano niya itatake yun. Pero yung response niya towards that message was very good. He was very supportive and very understanding. So ngayon, nagtatak po, po ako sa kanya kasi even a few weeks ago, before ko nirelease po yung vlog ko, actually nung blinack out ko yung social media ko, nag-message pa po siya sa akin, parang sabi niya, Nak, may tumutulong na ba sa'yo to get your social media accounts back? Kasi akala niya nahack ako. Mm -mm. So we were okay. So I don't understand why he is choosing to fight me. It feels like he's trying to fight me or trying to ruin me. When I never said a bad thing, a single bad thing about him. But why do you say he is fighting you or trying to ruin you? Because he's saying so many things that are untrue. Like? Like, for the past two years, hindi po siya kumukuha ng commission. It makes me sound even more ungrateful to the people na hindi naman nakakaalam kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob. He's calling me ungrateful when he knows very well how grateful I was to ABS-CBN. Na kahit wala akong kontrata sa kanila, I was doing so much work for them. I was supporting them. Nung na-shut down yung ABS-CBN, I was one of the artists that rallied alongside them because I didn't think it was fair na mangyari yun sa lahat ng employees nila na nakakasama ko sa taping every day. I didn't think it was fair for them to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. He knew how grateful and thankful I was to everyone. And alam... Siya po mismo nagsabi, masunurin ako, mabait ako na bata. So, why is he trying to say things to make people turn against me? You what are these things that you say? Calling me ungrateful. Saying that I didn't pay him commission. Um, <clears throat> just everything that he's been saying in his vlogs recently. Um, parang sinabi niya pa, 
a few weeks ago na parang nasasayangan siya sa career ko, he could have talked to me. We had a good relationship. Pwede siyang magtanong sa akin, ano bang, what are you up to, anak? Anong, anong plano mo? Anong ginagawa mo? Nobody has reached out. He didn't reach out to me. Why don't you reach out? When he messages me, I reply to him. But regarding this issue, he took things publicly without reaching out to me privately first. So I didn't feel the need to message him privately. That's where your pain is coming from. Yes. Mm-hmm. And anak pa man din yung tao niya sa akin. Gagawin niya ba yun sa mga anak niya? Would he have done that to his daughters? He has five daughters. Mm-hmm. What do you want to say to him? Sana kinausap niya man lang ako. You know, because before naman, whenever we would have problems, we would talk it out. Dito, kung na-hurt siya sa mga sinabi ko, sana sinabi niya muna sa akin personally. Instead of treating me like everyone else in the industry that he talks about on his channels, he should have talked to me kasi parang naman wala kaming pinagsamahan. Parang hindi niya ako anak kahit na yung tao niya sa akin. Because he's treating me like everyone else in the industry. You wouldn't dare call him. I'm just not ready. Let's go to the Jealous of the Flowers. Mm-hmm. What was that? I created a poem like that, but then later on they were like, what do you really mean by this? Well, what I meant was, I feel like I'm a flower <clears throat> where I'm bound to the ground that I am, I am planted in, mm-hmm. and everybody looks at me and just expects me to stay like that forever to keep to maintain that beauty to be to just be a flower but then there's so much more that I feel like I'm capable of that I can be and so we came up with the idea of I wonder if flowers dream Hmm. do they dream of flying do they dream of not being in that same garden forever dancing against the wind yes Shredding the petals as they ascend. Yes. That's when it came mm-hmm. about. Yes, Paul. Okay. I get it. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to move on to the 13 years, 25 mm-hmm. years old. I was never asked for my inputs. Mm-hmm. Uh, anim na feature films, 500 episodes of teleseries, mm-hmm. uh, tatlong uh, genres, romance, comedy, and drama, 16 years old, mm-hmm. one main co-star, mm-hmm. same production company, rotating around three directors, I was never asked for inputs, thoughts, or ideas. Inuulit ko lamang ito. Again, Liza, it sounded like a protestation. Mm-hmm. But you became a superstar. After hearing your thoughts on that, I totally, I believe that I could have explained myself better. Mm-hmm. I won't take that back, though. What I said is true. Those are all facts. I was just stating facts and trying to help my fans my family, my friends, everybody that was questioning my decisions, Mm -hmm. why I was changing. I only wanted to be in a love team. I only wanted to work alongside Ken. I only wanted to work with these three directors that I was enumerating. I only wanted to work with these creatives because they were the reasons, in my mind and to everybody's, you know, what everybody thinks of me is, they are the reason for my success. And that's exactly what I thought. That's exactly how I felt. I was scared to go beyond that because I thought that kung paghihiwalayin kami ni Ken, kung hindi na kami love team, hindi na ako successful. Kung hindi itong tatlong director na to ang makakatrabaho ko, hindi kikita yung film. Hindi maganda yung mm. film. And I think looking back, that mindset that I had, that notion that I had, was wrong. Because yes, magagaling silang director. Yes, napasikat nila ako, yes, they made my movies, my TV films successful. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun that other directors and creatives aren't capable of doing that. They just need an opportunity. But you take full responsibility of the, of the, of the yes, choices. Yes, of those okay. choices. Or it was an enumeration. It was an enumeration. You were not complaining, you I were not, not protesting. Okay. Yes, but mm. now it's time for me to grow as an individual. That's what you wanted to say. Mm-hmm. I want to move on from mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I am. Yes, but I also want to clarify, hindi po ako na-offer ng solo projects aside from Darna. Darna was the only solo project that was offered to me. Pero bakit ba hindi natuloy ang Darna? Okay. 
Inexplain ko po yun dati in a TV Patrol interview with MJ Felipe that it was because of my finger. But there's more to that than just that. It was severely affecting my mental health. And dun ko din realize that's when I had all those realizations that I wanted to do more while doing Dharna. I prepared for Dharna for two years. I trained and even filmed, I had eight, filming, eight shooting days with direct Eric Martin. Along the process, I was training every day. Um, on the off days, na wala po akong taping for Bagani, I was training six hours a day. I would even train when I had taping for Bagani and I would train on set. I would train six times a week. My only off day was Sunday. No matter how skinnier I got, no matter how much stronger I got, it never felt like it was enough. And that's because, well, one, that's what people were telling me. And two, I started not believing in myself too because of the pressure. The management was constantly telling me that this Darna needs to work. Mm -hmm. It needs to become a success. It needs to be the biggest Darna there ever was. And I believed that that was all, all possible at first, but then as we were going along, I started losing belief in myself because as I got skinnier, they were upset that I was getting skinny. And then when I would put on a little weight because they wanted me to make gain muscle, I would be too overweight for the role. So it's like I, I was never enough. I was never pleasing them. And so that was really affecting my body image, my mental health. I just, I didn't think that I was deserving of the role anymore, and I didn't think that I could do it. Did you back out? Were you fired? I backed out three times. I, I did so twice, um, and that was before Bagani ended. Um, and that was because they were taking me out of Bagani, and I was so scared that the love team was going to end. Okay. And... They, ha they were offering Ken projects without me. And I didn't want the love team to end. I was holding on to that. Mm. Because it was my comfort zone. And at the time, I thought that me and Ken haven't achieved much compared to, you know, the number okay. one love team. Okay. Let's go to another quote. I obviously know it would be much easier to just stick to what has been working for me, to stay forever the same. And I know and I understand that it's unfair to all the Liza Soberano Lizken fans, but I hope you understand that by doing so, by giving into the pressure of doing what everybody else wants for me, I'm also I'm, I'm being unfair to myself, Hope Soberano. I've sacrificed my childhood, I've sacrificed my freedom, and I've sacrificed my happiness to present Liza Soberano to the world. And I think I've earned the right to finally be me, to finally be able to do things for me as Hope. This sounds like you were abused. But we didn't see this because hindi namin nakita na nagsuffer ka publicly. Mm -hmm. That was the disconnect. Mm -hmm. Can you explain? I wouldn't say I was abused. I, no, I wasn't abused at That's all. a strong word, I know. Yeah, it's yeah. a strong word. But I was hard on myself because of the demands of the industry. You were hard on yourself. I was hard on myself okay. because of the demands of the industry. The management had certain requirements from mm -hmm. us. Um, I was constantly pressured to stay where at the level that I was at or go beyond that, past that. And because of that, I made certain decisions. I would refrain from saying certain things because I'm a very opinionated person. Everybody knows that about me. But there's more that I could have said. There's more that I wanted to do, but I held back because that's not what was expected mm -hmm. from me. I wanted, I wanted to go to Hollywood. This isn't a secret that mm -hmm. the management that I kept from the management. They knew that. I've always expressed that. And it's not like they ever directly said no to me. No, you can't go to Hollywood. But it also wasn't being pushed for. It wasn't being entertained. And that's why. I was expressing in the earlier parts of the video that I was never asked for my input. 
because even when I would give my input, it wasn't taken seriously. Which was not necessarily wrong. Which wasn't wrong. Sticking to the formula that worked. Yes. Fans. You mentioned fans. Kumusta mm-hmm. kayo ngayon? I actually had a fans day the other day with my solo fans kasi 10th year anniversary po namin. And marami po silang tampo sa akin. Actually, ang naramdaman nga nila na in the past few years is mas pinapaburan ko ang mga Liz Ken fans over that, over my solo fans. They verbalized this. They verbalized this. And that was always an issue, actually. My solo fans always thought that I preferred Liz Ken fans. Okay. And that isn't true. Um, I love all my fans. I'm grateful for all of my fans. They also had certain requests for me. Siyempre, as a solo fan, they wanted to see me grow beyond the love team. Mm-hmm. And that's also where the crossroads meet again. Okay. I was getting these comments. I was getting these these requests from my fans. They were like, we want to see you in this kind of film. We want to see you do other things. Okay. We don't want to see... They even use the term pabebe Liza anymore. And that's actually what started going into my mind as I got older. Oh, yeah. I've only been seen in love, in a love team. I've only ever done romantic comedies. They're expecting more from me. You see, that's another point of conflict because tonight narini ko yung paliwanag mo na ikaw pala ang ayaw uh, gumawa si Ken ng solo projects. You were afraid to get out of the love team kasi comfort zone mo. As opposed to this that I'm hearing now, na meron din mga fans na nagsasabing, um, gusto namin ikaw mag-grow, gusto namin, you know, hard to find the middle ground. It was very hard. And hard. Because ang daming opinions, ang daming right. voices, Shepard Liz Ken fans wanted more Liz Ken. Liza fans wanted more. Liza. Liza. Materials. The industry wanted what, what whatever works. Right. So where do you go? I go with whatever works. Okay. Even though I know deep down inside that there's more that I could do. Ito pa rin ang, ito pa rin ang pag-iisip mo hanggang ngayon? Yes. You will go for what works? No. Ngayon, Nasaan ka na ngayon? I want to take risks. Okay. Because you are embarking on a fresh new journey, taking control of my life, exciting, terrifying, anxiety-filled, confusing, mm-hmm. again for your vlog, but finally living my life. Mm-hmm. The big question, what if you fail? At least I tried. At least wala po akong regrets pagtanda ko na hindi ko man lang sinubukan to. I didn't give my give my all. I didn't give myself a chance to discover what it is that makes me happy, what I find fulfillment in. It's not that I didn't, I wasn't happy in all those years that I was in a love team, all those years na nakatrabaho ko ang ABS, si Tito Oji, si Ken. Those were some of the, I experienced some of the best things in life because of that. I achieved everything that I have now because of that. Okay. And I left it happy. I left it fulfilled, but that doesn't mean I can't want more. It doesn't mean that I, I people don't change and want growth and want new experiences. I get it. But indicators seem to point otherwise. I mean, not failure, but success. Mm-hmm. May pelikula ka sa Hollywood, mm-hmm. um, which is coming out this year. Mm-hmm. How is the view from there? Nakaapa ka na sa Hollywood? Mm-hmm. Uh, nakasalamuha mo na yung uh, mga tao doon? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you seeing? I'm seeing opportunity for growth, obviously. But it's just as wild. I mean, you know, Hollywood is Hollywood. Yes, it's just, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's just as intense. And hindi ko pa... It's just as intense. Yeah, yes. that's the right word. I haven't fully experienced that yet kasi isang project pa lang yung nagawa ko. But the project that I did, I had a really great experience, which I expressed in my vlog. Right. Um, it went actually better than what I imagined it would be because, you know, I read <laughs> entertainment news around the world, too. And I know that Hollywood has its flaws, too. It's, it's oh, no industry is perfect. Yeah. Um, so I came there, you know, knowing what I experienced here in the Philippines and you know, not expecting anything perfect from them. But the process was so much fun. I, again, was empowered to be creative, to just be myself, to explore. And I really enjoyed that. 
I enjoyed seeing how collaborative each unit, each element of the filmmaking process was, um, from the crew to the staff to the designers to the makeup artists to the artists. Yeah. Everyone talked freely amongst themselves. Everyone was treated as equals. And it was just, it was refreshing and nice to have an experience. May mga susunod kang proyekto sa Hollywood? Um, hopefully. I've been auditioning for a lot of different things. Um, is it true that just getting auditions is really tough? It isn't as tough, you know, actually getting the, the, <laughs> the different audition pieces. Okay. Getting casted for something is tough because you're competing against the so world. many other people in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you okay? I mean, you're coming from a place of privilege. Mm -hmm. You're coming from, you're, you're a superstar here. Yes. And then you go the rounds of auditions. I mean, it, is it difficult? Mahira, pero gusto ko. Okay. I like challenging myself. I love na andan ako. Nobody is treating me with privilege. No one cares about the success okay. that I have over And you here. like that? I like that. Okay, you like the journey. I want to go back to the endorsements because mm -hmm. you also said another thing uh, on your vlog mm -hmm. that now I am more intentional. Mm -hmm. And here's a problem again. Ang ibig sabihin ba nito, yung mga endorsements ni Liza dati, uh, hindi siya intentional. Mm -hmm. You have to explain that. Yes, I'm trying to be more intentional with my endorsements okay. now. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun na lahat ng endorsements na ginawa ko dati, hindi ko gusto. Or hindi ka naniniwala? Hindi ako naniniwala. It's just that I was younger, you know. Okay. Um, at the time, those were brands that I thought would be amazing for my branding as well. And people change. How I was when I was 13 is different from when I was 15, is different from when I was 18, is different to who I am now. I totally get it now. And when I saw your collaboration with Maya, mm -hmm. I got that. Because mm -hmm. there's participation, mm -hmm. uh, not just as an endorser, but mm -hmm. uh, it's collaborative. Is this mm -hmm. a kind of endorsement that uh, we'll be seeing you involved in? I hope so. Um, Yun din po yung ibig kong sabihin by being intentional. I want to be collaborative with all the brands that I associate mm -hmm. myself with. Kasi for me, for the longest time, kilala ako as one of the top endorsers. Pero they didn't know me for me. Okay. I was known as part of Lizken. I was known as the top endorsement, the beautiful girl. But that's it. You know, they didn't know my personality. That was actually a thing that came up in my brand essence a lot. Parang, I'm mysterious. No one knows anything about me. Yung Instagram ko mukhang tindahan. And so, one outlet for me to be able to express myself is through the brands that I associate myself with. Oh. And if I'm participating or collaborating in the process of making the campaigns, that's how I can show them me. That's how I can express my creativity and who I am. Yeah, my reaction to that is lucky you. Mm -hmm. But you're now at that point in your life when you are evolving. Yes. You know, because you've been through that. Yes. I like the way you put it. Ang mm -hmm. IG mo parang tindahan. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Parang pangarap lang yun marami. Yes. Uh -oh. And you're not saying, again, I'm not putting words into your mouth, but mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't also, it doesn't also stunt my growth mm -hmm. as an endorser because I want to be involved more. Yes. Okay? Yes. So, uh, Liza, if you were to say, you know, sorry and thank you. Let's start with Ken. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? Halimbawa lang, hingi ka ng paumanhin at magpapasalamat ka kay Ken. Mm -hmm. How would that sound? I feel like I should say sorry for not being as understanding or being able to see his struggles because I was struggling at the same time too. Okay. Um, but I want to say thank you because he was very understanding of the whole situation. Till now, he supports me with everything that I do. And he's always been, you know, a good friend to me, a good boyfriend. And, you know, all everything that I have now, lahat ng success ko, he was the person that I got to share that with. And it was a good experience. Tito Oji. Tito Oji? Um, I would say sorry if I hurt his feelings through my vlog. Um, and I would say thank you for everything that I have, everything that I know, and everything that I've achieved through his help. 
ABS CBN. ABS CBN, you know, ABS CBN was always my second home. I um, devoted so many years to them. I'm sorry again also to them if there were people that I worked closely with that were offended by some of the things that I said in my vlog. That wasn't the intention. But then also I'm thankful to them and they know this. I'm thankful for them taking a risk on me when, you know, I wasn't I was a nobody for investing in me, developing me, creating Liza Soberano and Thank you also for being understanding when I decided to no longer renew with them. Your Tita. Tita Joni and I, honestly, we had a bit of a falling out in these past two years due to miscommunication also. And I'm sorry if, you know, the lack of communication from my end caused her any pain. And also if she feels like she isn't part of my new journey anymore and I didn't get to thoroughly explain that to her but I want to say thank you because actually all of this is because of her she was the first person that believed in me if not for her I wouldn't have met Tito Oji if not for her I wouldn't have met ABS if not for her I wouldn't have met Ken okay. and so thank you she was my she is like my second mom okay. and I just I'm so grateful for her for taking care of me for all these years Tito Dudu must just be somewhere yes. watching over you. Yes, Tito Dudu. What do you want to say? I want to say sorry that I wasn't able to really be there for him these past few years. And I'm sorry if he felt left out sometimes. He was very proud to have discovered me. And yun lagi yung pinagmamalaki niya, which is nakakatuwa. I'm one of his proudest achievements. <laughs> And I just want to say thank you also. He's the second person that I would say really believed in me. And I wouldn't be where I am today without Tito Dudu Unai. Yeah. Your fans. Sorry if they're disappointed in the decisions I made. But also thank you for understanding. Thank you for supporting me throughout the years. Thank you for the journey. Because none of my success would have happened if they didn't support me and believe in me. Ano ang nais mong sabihin sa sarili mo? Thank you for being strong despite everything that you've been through. Thank you for being a good person, for always wanting to grow and push yourself to be better professionally and personally. And just thank you for not giving up on yourself. To the careless guys who are carefully taking good care of you now. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to say thank you to them because they were the first people that really empowered me, inspired me to really fight to have a voice and to really find what makes me Hope Soberano happy and fulfilled. But also they're constantly working day in and day out to help Liza achieve her goals as an actress and as an endorser and as an advocate. But they keep Hope, you know, the person inside grounded and they help me understand the world from a different perspective. What is your prayer right now? My prayer, I just pray that people would be kinder. People would really try to be more compassionate, understanding of other people's journeys. Understand that like, especially in showbiz, there's a lot that is unsaid. There's a lot that we don't talk about. There's a lot that goes on behind closed doors. And I hope that they just, I pray that people always remember that we're all people at the end of the day that make mistakes, but also just are trying our best to make our fans proud, make the, our loved ones proud, and the people that take risks on us proud. So I just pray that people would be nicer and more compassionate. Last question. After everything has been said and done, after the noise, mm -hmm. you know, it has been so noisy the past week, after all of the speculations, after all the good and the bad, mm -hmm. just who are you when no one is watching? I'm Hope 
I'm actually a very, <laughs> very sensitive, but I'm also, I'm a big dreamer. There's a lot that I want for people. I just want the best for everyone. I want to create a good and safe world for everyone, not just for myself, not just for my loved ones, but for everyone. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the best. The interviewer. Hi, people of the Philippines and people of the world. Hit the button below and you will be subscribing to the Boy Abunda Talk channel on YouTube. Let's keep talking. Kaibigan, tuloy ang usap.